Hey everyone, I just wanted to remake my old Ratchet X videos and put a little bit more information in them, make them just clearer. So today I'm going to be covering chromosomes, alleles, loci, phenotype, and genotype, dominant and recessive, and how to use a Putnam square. So I hope that's a helpful video. If it's not, I have some really helpful links in the description. So yeah. First off, what is a chromosome? Well, it kind of looks like a piece of rice, and it's full of DNA. All the chromosomes live in the nucleus, which is inside of a cell. Every animal has a different amount of chromosomes. Rats have 42. They get 21 from each parent. If you think about a chromosome like a bus with two aisles of chairs, then think of one allele like one person sitting in a chair. And a locus is two people sitting across from each other. A locus is referring to where they sit on the bus. And an allele is the person sitting in a chair on the bus. So a real allele on a chromosome would look like a little line on the rice. And a locus would be, of course, two. And if there's multiple sitting together like this, that would be a loci. That is multiple. Okay, so what do chromosomes do? Well, they're in charge of all sorts of different things, like fur color and eye color and ear type and all sorts of stuff. So if you were having a rat and you looked at it and you're like, this one's a goody, how would you write that down? Well, that's why we use letters, alleles, are written down as letters so we can figure out what's happening for dominant and recessive genes to figure out their phenotype and their genotype. So if I were to write down big A, big A, that would be a, a goody rat who can only have a goody rat babies. And if it were big A, little A, then that would be an agouti rat who can possibly have black rat babies. And then, if it was little a, little a, then that would be a black rat. If you have never bred your rat and you only know the phenotype, then you would write it as an A with a star. That's because you don't know if it's able to pass black or a goody. So dominant is kind of like a person screaming on the bus while trying to talk to a really quiet person. You can't hear the quiet person when the loud person is yelling. So this is top ear and this is the sign for dumbbell ear. So if a top ear is yelling, top ear, then you'll never know that it holds Dumbo because you can't hear who they're talking to. If you have a rat with black fur, then it's like two people talking at the same volume. They can both hear each other and have a normal conversation. So then it's expressed because they have two of them. They match each other. That's called homozygous when they match, and when it's like this, that's called heterozygous. So, <laughs> what is a phenotype? Uh, a phenotype is what you're looking at with your bare eyes. It's what you can see. It's So if you would look at this rat and say, oh, well that rat has top ear, so that's a top-eared rat. And that would be true, except for if you could see inside of it and see what it's holding, you would see that it holds Dumbo. So if you bred a rat that carried Dumbo to a Dumbo rat, you would probably want to use a Punnett square to see the outcome of the babies. Usually people will mark one side as dad and one side as mom. And then you take these and you put them that way. You take these and you put them that way. So dad's genes will go up and dominant genes always are written in front of recessive genes. So you want to write like this, go like this, going up, that's dad's genes, going sideways, this would be mom's genes. So these would be Dumbo carriers, but they would look like top ears. If you go sideways, Now you see that there is a chance, a pretty good chance, of getting Dumbo babies. 
So lots of people will do Punnett squares as like litter predictors and stuff. They're not always 100% accurate as, you know, you could have a whole litter of carriers and still not know that Dumbo was carried. Or you could have a whole litter of Dumbo. So those are really interesting things and they're really fun. I hope all of this made sense and um, yeah, I'll be doing more videos like this. So hopefully they help somewhat. Alright, I'll be trying to answer any comments too if you put them in the comment section. See ya.